Hello, artists and artworks. My name is TV Sky, and here's something a little bit different. About a year ago, I was contacted by a company called Galmon to review their PD-1161 graphics tablet. And now, almost exactly a year later, I was contacted by them again to review a different product much in the same vein. The PD-1560, which is the bigger and more feature-rich version of the 1160. So I said, sure, that sounds interesting. Send the review version along and I'll give it a look. And a couple of days later, what should happen but that I get contacted by a different company called Artisul. And they asked me, hey, would you be interested in reviewing our Artisul Pen Display D16 Pro? A tablet which is about the same size as the Gaumon and seems to have just about the same set of features. And I say, sure, why not? That sounds fun. Send a review copy along. And so now here we are with a double review video. These two tablets are roughly the same size and share a lot of functionality. So if you're looking for a cheap alternative to Wacom's incredibly overpriced Cintiq line, overpriced in my opinion anyway, then here might be a couple of rather compelling options for you. So here we have our first contender, the Gaumon PD1560, and we'll start with some of the physical features of the tablet itself. First of all, along the edges here, you've got 10 programmable keys, and they can be programmed to do pretty much whatever the hell you want them to do. Um, you can input as much as 16 combination inputs to each of the keys. That is to say, you could have one key be equal to the input of control, alt, shift, X, Y, Z, Q, P, X, something along those lines. If you really need that input, you can do it. For the most part, <clears throat> most people are probably just going to be using it for undo, redo, move the canvas around, change the brush size, stuff like that. That's certainly what I've been doing. And I have found that with the hotkeys that are available, um, I can pretty much draw on this thing without ever needing my keyboard. Like, it, 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 it does a good job of replacing all the functionality that I would normally have on my terribly dirty <laughs> and rather basic Logitech keyboard. Which is a nice feature. Uh, it, it, it does allow you to, you know, uh, ease up your workflow a little bit. Once you get used to it, it takes a little while for me to get you. Like, I'm constantly reaching for Control Z when I can actually just, you know, click here to undo and redo as much as I want. So that's all very nice and lovely. It's, it's very functional. The software with which you program this stuff is relatively simplistic. It is, in fact, exactly the same software as is used to run the Artisool. I imagine they basically license that software from the same uh, company that probably supplies it. Something along those lines wouldn't be unusual for lower budget products. Um, outside of that, there really isn't that much to the screen itself. The screen is like a standard IPS panel, and the thing you'll find with these cheaper tablets is that compared to the more expensive premium Wacom products and the like, they are generally less color accurate. They are generally slightly just lower visual quality, like there's, you can have some difficulties with the, with the c color correction and stuff like that. Now, it does come, oh, that's the power button, that's not the menu button. <laughs> it boots up pretty quickly, so that's not a problem. It does come with like a standard screen type interface where you can mess around and set stuff about the gamma, the temperature, the color effect, and stuff like that. So you can do some adjustments on your own to get it to your liking, but it only advertises itself as being 72% of the NTSC color gamut. Now, I'm not enough of a technically qualified illustrator to know exactly what that means, but I do know that that's, like, not as much as a Cintiq, basically. So you have to be aware of that, and that's, you know, that's the compromise that you make when you buy something that is this much cheaper than a comparable Wacom. The second thing to be aware of, and this is true for the Artisul as well, is that with these cheaper panels, you do tend to experience a little bit of pen drift near the edges of the screen. And what that means is, when I move my pen all the way out to the sides, there's a little bit of a discrepancy with where my mouse cursor is on the screen compared to where I'm pointing with my pen. It is not very substantial on my particular model, but it can be a bit temperamental from models. Like, you might get one that has quite a bit more of that happening, or quite a bit less than what's happening on my model. That's a bit of temperamentality, which again is one of those, one of those prices you pay um, for buying something as cheap. For my money, it doesn't bother me 
at all on this particular model. Like, it, at most, it causes, like, a little bit of awkwardness occasionally when I'm moving out to the side to pick a tool. Perhaps if you have your taskbar down at the bottom, that might cause you a little bit of an issue. It could be a bit of an issue when you're trying to, like, minimize or close windows and stuff like that. Uh, and it's the kind of thing that, depending on your personality, you may find it just unbearably annoying, in which case you might have to settle for springing for a more expensive tablet if you want something like this, because... It's a problem that you just have to get used to with these cheaper models, at least so far with the ones that I've experienced. Um, other than that, though, like uh, the wonderful thing about the Gaumon, the reason why the Gaumon has become my particular daily driver, although your mileage may vary, is specifically... And I'm just going to turn the screen off just to be safe. This thing right here. This is the stand for the Gaumon, and this is a wonderful little contraption. It's attached to the back of the tablet with screws that go into the back here. It's, it's completely easy to assemble, although it's easy to assemble it wrong upside down, which I did manage to somehow do that twice, because <laughs> I'm very stupid. But basically, you pull this little tab right here, and the arm goes slack, and you can pretty much set it to, like, any degree that you want it to be at, as I am making my camera flop around massively, up to and including actually having it lean forward so that if you let go of it, it will fall. Be careful about that. But the wonderful thing about that stand is that you can have the tablet be functionally vertical, um, which allows you to use it as my camera goes completely out of focus, would you please... Thank you. Which allows you to use it as a functional secondary monitor. Like I said, it's an IPS panel. It's not the highest. Like, don't use it as a gaming monitor. You might not want to watch movies on this thing. Um, but it's a perfectly functional second or, well, in my case, third monitor that you can use for all of your monitoring needs. I usually just have Twitter on it when I'm not using it to draw. Um, which is a good thing. And the level of adjustability is frankly kind of astounding because you can have it practically lying flat on your surface here and that's really good if you have particular um, posture issues, if you if you have some issues with your back or you really need something that's very adjustable in order to get a, a, a good position going on when you're drawing. The one trouble with having it lying down completely though is that in my experience it does get a bit unstable, like there's, it's only really standing on this bit of the base right here. And that's not, like, the most stable drawing position, so if, like, if you lean your arm on it, you can very easily start to get some wobble going on, which makes this, like, less than desirable for me, particularly. I usually keep it in a somewhat more upright position, where, while I enjoy, I, I adore this little stand here, it does have a bit of a tendency to slide. Like, if, if you put any pressure on it at all, it doesn't offer very much resistance, and so it has a tendency to slide back. Now, this doesn't happen if you just hold on um, to the buttons out on the left here, where, which is like your function keys anyway. At, at that point, it'll stay stock still the way it's supposed to, but it's a thing that, you know, depending on your personality, might bug you, especially if you prefer to use your keyboard for your hotkeys and you don't want to sit, sit and hold on to the actual thing then that can be kind of annoying um, for your workflow and your process. Now, looking at the um, drawing action itself, I have not noticed any lag whatsoever, and overall I found it to be a, a perfectly pleasant experience. The Gaumon has a slightly rough texture on its surface, which... I don't know if you could hear that. It has a slightly rough texture, which gives you just a little bit of resistance um, when you're drawing. And I quite like that, because I like to get a little bit of resistance in my pen when I'm drawing, but that's very much a preference thing. I know a lot of people who much, like, deeply prefer to have no resistance whatsoever. They want a smooth glide because they feel like that gives more control. I like to have a little bit of resistance on mine, so your mileage may vary on that one. As for the setup, it's distressingly simple, actually, for a tablet. It used to be that if you went third party and you went with anything other than a Wacom, <clears throat> you kind of signed yourself up for a driver nightmare when it came to the installation. I remember having some tablets where it was just like every other week <clears throat> some fucking thing would break and I'd have to download a new round of drivers instead of having anything. With the Gaumons, it's been a completely painless process. Now, you, if you have any other tablet software, like if you have a Wacom software or anything else 
install it on your system, uninstall all of it completely first, then restart your computer, then attach the Gaumon, install the drivers, and then restart your computer again, and then everything should work. But you do have to be careful about that, because driver conflicts are the bane of your existence when you're trying to make one of these damn things work on your system. So long as you follow like a rigorous pattern of complete uninstall, restart the computer, install, restart the computer, you should be fine. I have had absolutely no trouble with either the Gaumon or the Artisul, um, which is a lovely change of pace for especially the cheaper tablets, but it's something to be aware of. Even Wacom tablets often run into driver issues that can completely brick or break, um, even their screen tablets, the really expensive ones. I have artist friends who have had horror stories about that. Now. The cable installation is a slightly different matter. You can see there's two cables coming out of the Gaumon itself. And one of them is an HDMI, the other one is a power cable um, to uh, run the power to the actual system. And the Gaumon requires both an HDMI connection to your computer, so you need to make sure that whatever card you're using, whatever graphics card you have, has a spare HDMI slot to send images to your tablet screen. I didn't have a, a spare HDMI slot because my other two monitors were taking up all the HDMI slots, so I had to switch those over to display ports instead so that I could get this thing to run. It's a thing to be aware of before you start setting this up, especially if you already have a multi-monitor setup, is that you, you might have some port problems that you need to solve along the way. It also needs to draw power from the wall, which is normal uh, for tablets like these ones, but it does at least for me, this is one of the things that has always made me wary about calling this sort of thing portable, because you do need to have wall power in order to power this thing. You need to be close to an outlet next to a wall, and if you're already like working with a laptop combined with this thing, you're going to need two outlets from a wall in order to make this thing truly portable, and that's like... Are you gonna get that at the airport? I kind of, I think not. It's it's not really a portable solution, at least not in my mind. Gaumon likes to advertise it as such. Personally, I kind of doubt it. Another disadvantage of the stamp. Now, I love the adjustability of it, but it does have rather a large footprint when you put it on your desk, which means like this, it this thing just takes up a lot of space. Um, on your desk. Luckily, I have a big desk, I can accommodate it, but if you don't, then, you know, maybe going to something slightly more compact or smaller would be up your alley, because this is rather a large thing, and this is just a personal aesthetic complaint, but I have never liked the really wide bezels on display um, tablets like this one. And this isn't the artist who suffers from that as well, but you have these really wide bezels where there's just nothing, and the screen itself is this little square in the middle of it. It kind of looks ugly, but again, this is a very cheap product compared to a, a Wacom, and to the best of my knowledge, the Wacoms have this, like, this big bezel problem as well. Oh, not a problem, it's probably a design feature that makes perfect sense. I just have an aesthetic complaint about it. Anyway, yeah, the Gaumon has become my personal daily driver out of the two, um, but I wouldn't say that it's necessarily strictly superior. And here we have our second contender, the Artisul D16 Pro. Now you'll notice I don't have it plugged in at the moment, and that's because, well, I ended up with the Gaumon as the one I prefer to use myself, and I'm not uninstalling the Gaumon and reinstalling this thing just to film a little bit about the physical proportions of the tablet. We can talk about it without looking at the screen. The screen quality on this thing is much the same as it is on the Gaumon. I didn't notice much of a difference. It has a slightly higher refresh rate for the pen, um, which is to say that I think the Gaumon updates 233 times a second, and this thing updates 300 times a second, which theoretically makes it feel a little bit more responsive. I'll say I didn't notice any difference, uh, so I wouldn't worry too much about it. Now, the Artist Tool, uh, as you'll notice immediately, does not have the stand attached to the thing, and we'll talk about that in a second, uh, but that's one of the major physical differences. But the other major physical difference is that it has seven fully programmable buttons along the edge. Now, if you're counting on the screen right now, you might say, hang on, there seem to be eight buttons. What about this one? Well, this button, <laughs> it um, it controls a ring light. There's a little light in here, in the little scroll ring, and when you press this button, you turn the light on or off, or you make it into, a, like, a pulsating breathing light. It, it, they advertise it very proudly on the website. I don't understand why, because it... It's just a little light that sits, it's just a little LED, um, and I feel like I would much rather have had an eighth programmable button to, to, to actually do my work with, so I don't know about that feature, but it's there if you want it, I suppose. 
they're programmable in exactly the same way that the uh, Gaumon is. It's exactly the same software. It can do exactly the same things. You can up put like 16 inputs into each key if you want to. Mostly you'll do undo and redo, I'm sure. The major difference is the little wheel here, because this wheel is the major thing that I have really missed on the Gaumon after working with the Artisul. Um, because this thing is incredibly convenient for things like increasing and decreasing your brush size, uh, zooming in, zooming out, scrolling up and down, and it can be programmed with multiple different functions. It also works with Windows own dial uh, drivers, which means there's going to be a little dial comes up on screen, you can select a function, you can use it to do like as many as I think um, eight, ten, something like that. You can program it to do ten different things that you can select, and it's also clickable. Uh, so there's a lot of versatility there. I really did find myself missing that on the Gaumon because the, on the Gaumon you have to do a button input and drag my mouse cursor around in order to resize the brush and stuff. And this is, a, this is just so much more lovely and convenient. Plus, it's a really nice little fidget toy. Like, just... Ah, that's lovely. Uh, the other major physical difference from the Gaumon to, to the uh, Artisol is the I.O., because as you can see here, there really isn't much of it on this model. It only has a USB Type-C out. And let's talk about those cables for a second. I've got them here somewhere. There we go. So, the USB Type-C is just this little thing, and it's a um, L cable, L-shaped cable, which is very convenient, because that means it sits really flush against the tablet, and because it's a USB Type-C, you can turn it either make the cable point this way or that way. Very flexible, very versatile, and because the cable just doesn't stick out in one direction, um, which is something that, like, the Gaumon's cables just stick out in one direction, which means they take up a bunch of space on the side of the tablet. Here, it's much more conservative on the space. It's, like, easier to fit on your desk as my camera goes completely out of focus. Thank you very much. Easier to fit on your desk. Now, that USB Type-C leads into, as you may expect, your HDMI cable, which is then split further into your USB connection, which is the thing that uh, transfers the inputs from the screen to your PC, which is then split into the final bit of kit, which is the red USB, which is the power cable. Now, this thing comes with a wall adapter, same as the Gaumon, but it doesn't need it. Now, this comes with a few caveats. My computer, my particular computer, my power supply, my USB outs, uh, it might only work on USB 3.0. I don't know how much power you can draw over each specific connection, but on my particular computer, I can draw enough power to power the entire thing just from the USB alone. I did not need to plug it into the wall. I did not need an adapter. And that is the major convenience factor that might make someone choose the Artisol over the Gaumon, in my opinion, because if you want to be portable, if you want to use this thing with a laptop, if you want to take it around, if you want to take it to school, if you want to take it out on a train or whatever, <clears throat> not that anyone's doing that right now, but hopefully someday this shit will all be over, um, then the Artisol is strictly the superior choice, specifically because it can draw enough power just from your computer to power itself. Again, the, your mileage may vary. You might need a laptop that has a certain level of, of power draw itself, and you will still want to plug your laptop into the wall because something like this drawing power from your laptop, that's going to be pretty harsh on your battery. But it's an option. It makes it infinitely more portable than the Gaumon, which requires, as we talked about, two outlets um, in order to power both your computer and the screen tablet. Another physical difference between the Gaumon and the Artisol is the pen. Now, uh, this is something I didn't mention when we were talking about the Gaumon. The Gaumon's pen, as you can see, it's this one, is a lot bigger. <laughs> it's a lot longer. It's also a lot heavier. And that's, for me, that's a good thing, because having a heavier pen, I feel like that's, that's a nicer feeling in my hand. But the reason why this pen is heavier is because it has an internal battery that needs to be charged. This is a rechargeable pen. It comes with a little charger. There's a little charging hole on the back of the thing. And eventually, when you're using it, it'll run out of battery. You'll have to recharge it. Now, because this consumes functionally no power whatsoever, it'll run a long time before you have to recharge it. But the Gaumon's pen does need to be recharged. The Artisol's pen is a lot lighter, and it does not need to be recharged. It gets all the power it needs. I think from induction, as you go across the screen, something like that. Some kind of science wizardry that I don't understand. Um, and that, again, 
much more convenient, also more portable, because again, if you need, if you go out on the go with a Galmon and you need to charge your pen, that's another goddamn outlet on a wall that you need to fill with an adapter in order to power uh, the recharge on this thing. Like I said, this will probably go, like, months, probably. Uh, I wouldn't promise that, but it'll go a, a damn long time before it needs to be recharged, but still, it's like a thing. Um, the artist tool also has a much smoother surface than the Galmon, and this is very much a thing about preference, like we mentioned. It's a lot smoother, it gives you much less resistance than the Galmon, well, not much, but it gives you less resistance than the Galmon, and for some people, that's gonna be a huge boon, some people are gonna prefer that massively over the rougher surface of the Galmon. Personally, I like the rougher surface. Um, I did find that this screen has a little bit less glare than the Galmon, like if you shine, if you're in a bright environment, if there's sunlight or if there's light shining down on it, it glares back at you a little bit less. Although you will still want to mess with the backlight uh, adjustments and stuff like that in order to, to really get it to your preference. So this is far and away the more portable uh, version. Now the stand is also a different matter, and this is one of the things that makes me prefer the Gaumon over the Artisol, because the stand here, as you can see, it's a separate unit, it's not attached to the actual thing, which helps with portability also. But it also is a lot less, it's much more low-tech, really. Not that the Galmon thing is high-tech, but this is much more low-tech. What you have here is essentially a little case that you open up. Inside, you've got two metal rods, and you've got these tabs um, on the back of the thing. And you basically, in order to set the thing up, you put the metal tab, uh, the metal rod under the tab, and then that holds it down. Now, it has pretty good variability. Like, you, you can get it to stand, uh, let's see, about like this. This is, this is the steepest angle it'll go. That's the closest you'll ever get it to, um, to vertical. And what that means is that the Galmon is a lot better as a secondary monitor. Like, you, it's much easier to use it to, like, have Twitter on or just use it as a monitor when you're not using it to draw on. Um, which you know, point goes to the Galmon for me for that one, because I like having that extra monitor. Um, but the Artist Tool does uh, provide something that the Galmon doesn't. The Galmon has a tendency, as we mentioned, to slide. The Artist Tool doesn't move a bloody inch. You can see I'm even actually making my poor camera uh, bounce around as I'm trying to make this thing. You can make it slide with a little bit of concerted effort, but it has um, rubber feet on the bottom here that keeps it very much in place. And you might be worried that just putting the thing down on the thing, that the artist tool itself would be slip sliding around, but it's not because there's rubber uh, strips on the sides of this thing. So once you put your tablet down on it, especially if you put your hand down on it, you have a bit of weight, this thing ain't going nowhere. There's no sliding, there's no instability. And that's all very lovely, but Again, depending on your ergonomic needs, you may prefer something like the Gaumon that has much more granular adjustability. Whereas this thing has, like, there's basically... You got three tabs on the back, and you've got two different lengths of rods, which means you have six settings total um, for how much you can adjust this thing. Whereas the Gaumon can be adjusted, like, I think, like, over a hundred different positions, something like that. It, it's, it's a lot more. Um, this is a lot more portable than the Gaumon as well. Like, again, the portability thing being the major argument for the artist rule, in my opinion. But, you know, your mileage may vary. For what it's worth, the drawing positions that are available, the, the, the six positions you can put it in, they're fine. Like, I haven't had any trouble using them, but again, depending on your ergonomic needs, you may have to have that conversation with yourself about what is most important to you. So, in terms of pricing, the Gaumon PD1560 currently goes for $300 or $299.99 on their Amazon web store. That's US dollars. Whereas the D16 Pro is retailing at $379, which is a little bit of a difference. But again, if you value the portability, the Artist Tool may be the superior choice for you if you would want something that is more useful as a second monitor and more suited like to a stationary setup, then maybe the Gaumon is for you. As for me, I found them to be of 
roughly equal quality, with the choice coming down to whether you really value having the little wheel on the side, which honestly can be a big difference maker, and just how much you value portability, which I don't value at all because I never go anywhere. You'll find links in the description that'll take you to the shop where you can purchase either one of these tablets that catches your fancy. They are not affiliate links. I am not getting a cut of any of the sales that go through. And to close out this video, here's two time lapses of illustrations that I created first on the Gaumon and then on the Artisul. I hope you'll enjoy. Future fun. It's not your job, it's just 